I can't even believe it. After almost three weeks of straight research on evolutionary theory and Greek life, we have come to the final video in the Greek life series, Hazing. anyone who has watched all the videos I've made on this particular overlap between Greek life and evolutionary theory, thank you. That means so much. Now, I've kind of alluded to the fact that I'm going to be talking about hazing because there wasn't really time to squeeze it into any of the other videos that I've done. So I hope that you're just as excited as I am and now let's get into it. Okay, so I guess the main thing that I'm wondering about hazing is why something as barbaric and humiliating would still exist in the modern world. And I did some research, and prior to that, I only thought that hazing was really something that happened on college campuses, but technically it isn't just that. Hazing can be pretty much anything that demonstrates you are a worthy member of the given group or society, culture, so on and so forth. Something that I didn't realize is a lot of cultures around the world, things that move you from, for example, becoming a from being a boy to becoming a man is considered hazing still. I didn't really realize that at the beginning of this process, um, but oftentimes it is public humiliation involved or proving that pain or you're willing to take one for the team, for your family, for your culture, that's part of the process. And I guess that means it's then a part of hazing. And this goes back for thousands of years. It's something that existed in human societies for a very long time. And after realizing that hazing isn't just something that happens on college campuses, I found myself coming to the same three conclusions every single time as to why it persists in so many places. So the first thing that I found is hazing can create a closeness or a bond between two people that go through something hard. Have you ever heard traumatic experiences will bring you so much closer? I think this is kind of along those same lines. When you are with a group of guys having to drink, I don't know, upside down from a keg stand together and you're all throwing up together, you got through it together. So then that brings you guys closer. And that process there kind of mocks kinship. It mocks that, oh, we went through hard times together, we stick together forever for life, we're family kind of thing. Does that make sense? I hope so. So the next thing that I found is along the lines of the fact that oftentimes hazing happens in multi-generational groups, or in other words, one when one group leaves, another comes in. So this can be a family, for example, typically there's a, a generation there that you're replacing. So if your grandfather passes away, you've got, I don't know, the grandson who's becoming a man, I guess. <laughs> so there's like a multi-generational thing happening and there's a gap to fill. The same thing happens on college campuses. When the seniors graduate, freshmen come in. And because of that, there's this thing that happens where groups want to prevent freeloaders or someone who's going to gain the rewards of a group without putting the work in themselves. So if you're not a freeloader, you will sacrifice for the good of the group. You will go through this hazing process to prove that you aren't someone who's just going to reap the rewards that this greater organization is going to give you. And if you think about it, as bad, as unsafe as it is, in evolutionary terms, it's kind of a smart way to see who's going to stick their neck out for you and who's, I don't know, going to fall off the wagon. And then the third point that I came to is something that I'd heard of but never really done a lot of research on, and that is something called cognitive dissonance. Here's a quote that I think best describes cognitive dissonance. I am going to read it. Is that the human brain has a compulsion to maintain harmony with their beliefs. So in other words, if you have two things that kind of contradict each other. It's our nature to make them make sense. If you know that the sky is blue, for example, but someone tells you that the sky is orange, there's this need to work through that problem and make the two make sense together. Either you rule one out completely because the sky is not usually orange, or you say, 
well maybe there's a fire where they're from and the smoke is making the sky orange does that make sense you have this need to like make everything make sense so that is one example there's a lot of other ways that can go sometimes that also happens is cognitive dissonance will kind of erase parts of the problem so in greek life organizations you can there's been a lot of research done where you ask members after the hazing process is already done and they'll say oh it wasn't so bad oh it was for the good of the team oh it was worth it because you go in thinking that you're joining this sweet brotherhood this family we want you choose us we choose you kind of thing and then once you get there they treat you like crap they make you run at five o'clock in the morning drink all this stuff i don't know i don't know what they do really i've only heard stories but these two things contradict each other and the only thing that makes sense is to make them make sense so when it's done you're like oh yeah i know it was fine it was for the team it wasn't so bad people will rewrite hazing in their mind as something that brought them closer together versus broke them apart with all of that said i think it cannot be ignored that hazing is absolutely terrible everything i've said i think has been like a justification almost of why hazing exists oh hazing exists because it bonds us hazing exists to prevent freeloaders and i'm saying that like that is probably why it's been maintained but i'm not saying that that's a good thing so yes it exists and yes these like properties of the human mind kind of keep them going but like I said in my last video, this awareness that you have is I think the key to unlocking, breaking it down. So like, since we know that hazing has happened and maybe these are the reasons why it's happening, we could then use that information to say, well, let's, let's go back into that process. Let's go back into the way our brain thinks and kind of disconnect, untie, rewrite, retie the strings in a way that we treat people better and are kind to one another and find experiences that are gonna bond us differently than pain and humiliation. People die from hazing every year. College organizations have lawsuits, the houses have lawsuits, the parents, the friends, like it is just heartbreaking that this kind of thing is still happening in the 21st century in respect to like college organizations, not the like cultural experience of hazing. They're two very different things, but you understand what I'm saying. I really do think that we can use this to help either stop it or rewire the way that hazing has to happen. Instead of drinking all together, you tell stories and secrets and talk about your feelings. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people probably aren't into that, but I think that could be pretty fun. <laughs> um, anyway, I think this one was a little bit shorter than some of the previous videos. If this is the first one that you've seen, go check out some of the other ones I've done. I'll have them linked on the screen. I'll have the introduction video. It explains who I am, my background, things that you like need to know going into the series. They're all pretty important points. And if anyone out there wants to have a conversation with me in the comments, that's kind of been my favorite thing from this whole project is talking to people who either feel a certain way about something that I've talked about or, I don't know, thought of something that I didn't think of. Because a lot of what I've talked about, at least in this series, is stuff that's not really discussed on the internet. A lot of the connections that I've made have been original connections in some sense. Like the evolutionary theory exists, the, or the, the evolutionary framework exists, and then the common occurrences I guess in the Greek organization exists and I'm trying to connect the dots but maybe there's more information out there that I haven't found or maybe this is something that you've thought about let me know because I'm definitely not getting it all so thank you so much for your support and everything and stay safe during this global pandemic I don't know what's coming next actually this is kind of as far as I've gotten but hopefully it'll be something as interesting or more interesting than these so thank you stay safe peace out bye